if you get your app in natural function, you already have this for the use case. So what's the transformation from the first one? What's going to happen here? How is this one different? Left two. What's the transformation here? Right, three, nothing vertical. And then the negative is going to flip it upside down. Are these going to be in opposite quadrants or in adjacent quadrants? They're going to be opposite or are they going to be next to each other? Next to each other because they're square. And the negative flips them upside down, so they're both going to be down there. Good job. What's the transformation for the next one? I heard up three. We're going to roll with that because it's correct. Good work. Oh, boy. What happens when we get one like this? We cry? Okay, crying is an option. Very good. Uh, so Alex is 100% correct. He says, don't worry about it. It's just like 1 over x. As long as the degree is odd, it just looks like 1 over x. And he is 100% right. We move to the right 3. The negative will flip it upside down. Vertical flip. And so we have this shape. You try the last two on your own. Go. Here we go. You should have right three. Sounds like Alex wants my job. Up two. I think Alex is fully capable. And the next one, I'm going to go right two. Up one. And it's going to flip upside down. Because it's squared, they'll be adjacent. So was that like a nice review? See, as a teacher, that's 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 like something you think about. You're like, do I have to do a little bit of review before I get into the lesson? Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But so that was one adjustment I made years ago. I said, uh-oh, we should do a practice of six problems just to kind of prime their brain. Is your brain primed, Caitlin? What's different about this one? It's got an X in the numerator and an X in the denominator. It's not set up in the form like the other ones are. And so it's like, you know, what, what can we learn about this? Well, there, there's four things we're going to determine. We've been able to do that vertical asymptote and horizontal asymptote, right? We're going to come up with those. The way we're going to come up with them is we're going to divide it. We're going to take x plus 3, and we'll divide it into x. x plus 0. What do you multiply x by to get x? So I got x plus 3, you subtract, get negative 3. So it becomes minus 3 over x plus 3. Or in other words, negative 3 over x plus 3 plus 1. See how I went from here? Just by dividing it, it is now rewritten as that. Well, I want to grab that, don't I? Left 3. That means that I have a vertical asymptote of x equals negative 3. Up 1. That means I have a what of what? Horizontal asymptote of y equals 1. Good. You guys are smart. Not that I ever doubted you. We're going to identify two other key components. The y-intercept and the x-intercept.
The y-intercept happens when what is what? When the x is 0. Very good, DeWalt. When I plug in 0 for x, I get the y-intercept. If you plug in 0 for x, you get 0 over 0 plus 3. What is that? 0. So it has a y-intercept of 0. So it crosses right there. Now I'm going to find the x-intercept. The x-intercept happens when what is what? When y is equal to 0. Now we need to put on our thinking caps. When is a fraction equal to 0? Is a fraction equal to 0 when the top is 0 or when the bottom is 0? When the top is 0, when the bottom of a fraction is 0, that's where it's undefined. So when is the top equal to 0? When x is 0. So ahead of time, you knew that it would create, the negative would create a vertical flip, right? But by determining the x and y intercepts, that, that tells you that this part of the graph is located down there. And there is no x-intercept on this other side, so you know that it's located up there. You could, but there's, there's thousands of rational functions. And sometimes we don't know that. In this situation, you would be able to predict ahead of time. We're trying to give you another way to be able to find locations of stuff. So definitely next year in calculus, you, you, you'll have to use other pieces of information. You won't always be able to look at it and know. Because you might end up with an equation that looks like the last one. X minus 1 goes into negative X plus 4. What do you multiply X by to get negative X? This is gone. Multiply it through, we get negative x plus 2. Subtract, and we get nulls. Oh, yeah, that was stupid. Idiot. We get 3. So plus 3 over x minus 1. So this is the graph of 3 over x minus 1 minus 1. So look at what we already know. What's the vertical asymptote? It's right one, so therefore x equals 1 is the vertical asymptote. And the horizontal asymptote, y equals negative 1. I'm going to determine the y-intercept and the x-intercept. The y-intercept happens when what is what. So when I plug in 0 for x, what do you get in the top? In the bottom? So that will be a negative 4, huh? And then the x-intercept happens when y is equal to 0. So if a fraction is equal to 0, do I look at where the top is 0 or where the bottom is 0? Where the top is 0. And that would be at 4. So we're going to plot negative 4 for the y-intercept, positive 4 for the x-intercept, and you can see that that tells us exactly then the location these curves. Now, we've just practiced the most basic examples of rational functions and determining behavior. What did I do? Did I mess up? Yes. Are we good? Stay. Alex is confused. Okay, all right. We will help Alex work through his confusion. 
All right, you've got the general idea, good practice. We're going to move to uh, this example right here. Yeah. All right, this one's a little bit different, okay? And what's interesting about this one is all the others had a remainder, but this one divides evenly. Why does it divide evenly? Because you can have x minus 2 over 2 times x minus 2. Uh-oh. When something divides evenly, that's when we have a hole in the graph. The part of the graph, or the part of the equation that divides off tells us where the hole is. If x minus 2 divided off, where do you think the hole happens? What x value do you think the hole occurs at? It happens at 2. Now, what I would like to do is I would like to look at what remains. If we divide this off, what remains? y equals 1 half. This will tell you the y value of the graph. Here's the other part I need you guys to see. Well, I'm sorry, no. So the graph looks like y equals 1 half, which is just a horizontal line, right? But the difference is, is when you get to 2, there's a hole. So it doesn't have a vertical asymptote. It doesn't have a horizontal asymptote. It's the graph of y equals 1 half. It has a hole at 2. Does it have an x-intercept? Does it cross the x-axis? No. Does it have a y-intercept? Does it cross the y-axis? Now, a lot of you guys would say, well, you know, it doesn't really have a hole. It's just kind of make-believe stuff. Watch this. It's kind of cool. I take the graph. I take x minus 2. And I divide it by 2x minus 4. And when you look at the graph, that didn't work out. Shut up, DeWalt. Okay, there's the graph of y equals 1 half, right? And now if I zoom as a decimal, Look at that. Gives you all the coordinates. And watch what happens when you get here. Come on, that's kind of cool. Thanks, B Lock. Eh? What divides off? An X. If the x divides off, there's going to be a hole at what x value? No. If x divides off, look here, x minus 2 divided off, and so the hole happened at 2. If x divides off, then the hole's at 0. Look at what remains. What remains is y equals x plus 1 over x minus 1. That's what remains. That will tell us what the y value is. If you plug in 0 here, what do you get? Negative 1. There's a hole at 0, negative 1. This is what the graph wants to look like. It just has a hole there. So let's figure out that graph. We've already done that. We take x minus 1 and we divide it into x plus 1. We you multiply x by to get x? 1. So you have x minus 1. Subtract, we get 2. We have 2 over x minus 1 plus 1. 
you know what that graph looks like? What's the horizontal shift? One. So that means I have a vertical asymptote of x equals one. What's the vertical shift? Up one. So I have a horizontal asymptote of y equals one. The y-intercept happens when x is 0. If you plug in 0 for x, what do you get? You get negative 1, right? So you could say the y-intercept is 0, negative 1, but isn't that where the hole is? So there is none. The x-intercept happens when the top is equal to 0. Where is the top equal to 0? At negative 1. That's the graph. Last one. Change the 6 to a 3. Change the 6 to a 3. Now, normally I divide this lesson up into two days, but because of the possible snow day on Wednesday, we're just getting through it all today. And you guys can have time tomorrow, Wednesday, and Monday. What's different about this one? Yeah. Notice how the top has a degree larger than the bottom. When we divide that in, we have x squared minus 4x plus 3. Before we even divide it in, I'm going to try to understand some other parts of the graph first. If I'm dividing by x plus 2, does anybody know the value where it's undefined? Negative 2. So I'm going to have a vertical asymptote at negative 2, unless it divides evenly, which it won't. The y-intercept happens when x is 0. If you plug in 0 for x, what do you get? 3 halves. The x-intercept occurs when the top is equal to 0. Well, look at the top. The top factors to x minus 3 times x minus 1. So if the top factors to that, where is the top equal to 0? 1 and 3. Look at all the information we've gained about the graph without even dividing it yet. We have a y-intercept of 3 halves. We have x-intercepts of 1 and 3. So that's what we know so far. We'll be able to figure out the rest when we divide it. x plus 2 goes into this. What do you multiply x by to get x squared? Multiply it back through. I have x squared plus 2x. I get negative 6x, and I drop the 3. What do we multiply x by to get negative 6x? Multiply through negative 6x minus 12. Subtract and I get 15. So we have 15 over x plus 2 plus x minus 6. And this will tell us the last part of the graph. And this is where you need to lean in to make your final connection. Look at the first one. What was on the end? The plus 1, right? That told us the horizontal asymptote, right? This one is a minus 1. That told us the horizontal asymptote there, right? This is an x minus 6. So instead of having a horizontal asymptote, we have a slant asymptote. It looks like x minus 6. And therefore, the graph Looks like this. And this is Alex's point. Alex, if you look over at this section here, do you agree that the graph does not cross the x-axis? So therefore, it must sit in this lower part. 
And you might say, well, don't they always go opposite? They don't. There are other examples where it would stay in the top. And so knowing that helps us to place them properly. So that's kind of cool. So look at your assignment so I can help you uh, do the right ones.